What good is art to an audience of one? My podcast, it may not be doing Joe Rogan numbers, but I do know that some people listen. My DYSE lives might not be hitting the millions and millions or thousands and thousands, but there are people who tune in and watch. Even the YouTube channel, you know, there are people who do watch the Dino and Daddy show. There are people who have bought my merch. And there's someone out there who has merch. You have art. You have a song. You have a cosplay. You have a podcast. You have some idea. You have a piece of art or an idea of art that you're sitting on. And you are only telling yourself or one other person about it. Art is to be shared and interpreted by the masses. I understand that we live in this toxic world now where there are haters and just mean, evil people who are just ready to cut down everything. And it's really because they're not doing it. You have something great that you're sitting on. It needs to be shared. Someone needs to hear your art. Someone needs to see your art. Someone out there needs to feel your art. When you're giving art to the audience of one, you're letting the rest of the world down. And even more than that, you're letting down the creator and who gave you that gift. Don't disappoint God. Don't disappoint the fans. Give us the art. Ladies and gentlemen, Blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? Yo, people, what's going on? It's your boy, Nick, for Do You Speak Geek. This is episode 106. Shout out to everybody who has been rocking. I hope y'all have had a great week. Yo, RIP to Louis Anderson and Meatloaf, too, man. Absolutely, yo. Rest in peace to those two legends in the game. Uh, but yeah, this is the podcast, Do You Speak Geek, episode 106. It's your boy, Nick. Shout out to everybody who has been rocking and listening. Everybody who listened to the last episode, I appreciate you greatly. And if you are new to this podcast, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. It's the pod where we bring you the latest and greatest in news and reviews inside of the geek realm. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably listening on Spreaker. That's the home team. Shout out to y'all. Most deaf. But anywhere you get your podcast, whether it be Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast, look for Do You Speak Geek. And hit that subscribe, please. Do you speak geek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG? We got the blogs, we got merch, we got more info coming your way. Just be patient with me, please. I appreciate y'all. But do you speak geek.com, central hub for everything DYSG? Check that out when you get a chance and even save it as a favorite. Follow us on social media Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram and TikTok at Do You Speak Geek. Head over to that Instagram too and y'all can uh, wish Mrs. DYSG a happy birthday. Yes, that is the model mom, KD. She has leveled up. Go wish her happy birthday. Say something nice. Tell her she's cute. She's pretty. All that good stuff because I do it too. The YouTube channel, the only place where you can find the Dino and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what y'all think. I just dropped the trailer for Do You Want to Build a Universe? That is coming soon before the end of the month. So get ready for that. A five part series coming from Do You Speak Geek on YouTube exclusively. So there was one pretty big story this week, but we're going to get into that behind the review. So people, like we do about this time, let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? All right, people, we got your reviews coming at you right now at rapid fire. Not many of them, but we got some. 
Yellow Jackets season one. There's plenty that makes Yellow Jackets a worthwhile watch. The writing, the unique female point of view, and the mysteries. But most of all, it's the incredible ensemble cast that they present to us with a pack of fearless, frustrating, and vulnerable characters unlike anything you'll ever see on TV elsewhere. Please check that out when you get a chance. The Legend of Vox Machina, yo, the animation, the music, the story, uh, they gave you three episodes um, up front for Vox Machina and rolled out with a natural of 20. Whether you've been waiting for the world of Critical Role to be brought to life or you're a new fan who just loves D&D, it's an enjoyable adventure right from the start. So check that out, people. And last we have When You Finish Saving the World, Jesse Eisenberg's directorial debut about an aloof mother and son is a awkwardly funny and deeply heartfelt on its own screen performance. So it's uh, it's very touching. Make you want to call your mom. <laughs> Check that one out, too, when you get the opportunity. All right, the big story this week has got to be this asshole, Joss Whedon. So he responded to the criticism behind the Justice League cast members while shooting the Justice League movie. The report of this comes saying that the controversy around the Justice League has swirled since before the film ever hit theaters in the fall of 2017. Whedon was brought on board to direct Justice League after Warner Brothers and Jack Snyder had a falling out during production on the film and Snyder left the project. It wasn't really a falling out. His daughter committed suicide. So there's that trash. In the first time speaking up since this matter, Whedon addresses some of the more specific claims that came from the respective stars of the Justice League. Wonder Woman star Gil Godot previously claimed that Whedon threatened to kill her at one point. I don't threaten people. Who does that, said Whedon. He then explains that when it comes to Godot, English is not her first language and I tend to be annoyingly flowery in my speech. He recounted the debate about a scene he had with the Israel's, is, uh, Israeli actress, which he claimed she took completely the wrong way. Wow. Okay. <laughs> In her own email response to New York Magazine, Godot apparently counters that she understood perfectly. Cyborg actor Ray Fisher, the one who has been spearheading this whole campaign behind bringing light to the bullshit of Justice League, was the driving force behind the opening dialogue about what happened. Fisher outright accused Whedon of being an abusive presence on set and even going so far as changing an actor of color's skin tone to a lighter shade. However, when it comes to Ray Fisher's claims, Whedon insists that he wasn't alone in thinking Fisher's cyborg's performance was up to task. Whedon claims he worked closely with Fisher on all the changes to cyborg's role in Justice League and that they had a fine relationship working on the film. Whedon now insists that Fisher was a malevolent force talking about a bad actor in both senses damn <laughs> finally when Wheaton doesn't outright blame Zack Snyder for all the backlash he received over Justice League he claims the cult of Snyder bros did come at him with the filmmaker's name even after Warner Brothers released Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max last year I don't know what started the online hate campaign I just know in whose name it was done Whedon credits the timing of both Justice League and his ex-wife publishing a scathing letter about him as creating the perfect storm of internet vengeance. Quote, The beginning of the internet raised me up, and the modern internet pulled me down, Whedon says. The perfect symmetry is not lost on me. Yo. This nigga is a whole... This nigga's trash. I'm sorry. I don't know any way to put this, and I apologize to anybody who listens to this. And, you know, I usually censor myself. But, yo, Josh Whedon, yo, this nigga's, yo, you're, you're, you're a whole, you a whole cum bucket, man. You just trash, though. Seriously, like, I don't like people who say one thing at one point, and then once someone says something about you, you want to backtrack and say something wrong. No, that's how, that's how you felt in the beginning, bro. And clearly you're you're a racist, <laughs> you're sexist, and you're just a horrible person, man. Like, I even feel bad now for even saying that the first Avengers was my favorite because you directed it. 
You know, I don't even want to watch Firefly no more. Or anything else for that matter. Like, I, I just don't want to support this dude, man. Because you're just trash, man. I don't know. What y'all think? Because F... F <laughs> Fuck Joss Whedon. That's all I say. I say fuck Joss Whedon. <laughs> that's 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 my take on it. Let's get into my favorite portion of the show. Make myself feel a little better. Y'all know the vibes. Source wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan, the pull list this week, we have Devil's Reign number three. New York City stands at the brink of disaster as Mayor Wilson Fisk has at last reached a breaking point with an army of supervillains at his back and a deputized crew of supervillainous thunderbolts on the streets and in every police station. Worse still, he's put the Marvel Universe's most powerful tools into all six of the hands of its most diabolical minds unaware of the disaster that could befall the entire city as a result, as a gauntlet of supervillains stand between Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Daredevil, and liberating the heroes who have been captured by Fisk's law enforcement, they're all about to learn that the danger is closer than they ever thought possible. Civilians, heroes, even children, no one is safe from the wrath of Kingpin. This book is getting heavy, you hear me? Yo, if y'all haven't read first two issues, find them now and then read this one. It is nuts. The 10 Deaths of Wolverine number one. Death is not the end. Death is the Omega. This is the second week of the Wolverine crossover event. If Wolverine's future lies in the past, what does that mean for the present? The reciprocal series to 10 Lives of Wolverine, 10 Deaths of Wolverine is a can't miss reading, chock full of revelations for the best there is, as well as the fate of mutant kind. Yee, check that one out. Gun Slinger Spawn number four, the return of the new and improved supervillain Clown. This is a clown who is bent on destroying Spawn, but he needs to corrupt Gun Slinger Spawn first. And just wait until you see who is fighting at his side. Yo, it gets crazy. Check that one out. Static, season one, number five. Here's the good news. Static knows where the government is imprisoning the bang babies that's rounded up off the streets of Dakota. Here's the bad news. Once he gets inside, he may not be getting out. <laughs> what are you doing there, Virgil? And finally, we have Superman and Robin special number one. Now, as the Super Sons, John Kent and Damian Wayne put evil to bed. Past his bedtime. But a new day has dawned and John Kent is now the Superman of Metropolis. All grown up and fighting for truth, justice, and the kinds of grown up things that Superboy was only beginning to understand as a child. Now a ghost from John's past has reared its head and to battle this evil, He'll need to reunite with Robin for one last mission into the heart of darkness. This time, they'll be battling not as Super Sons, but as Superman and Robin. This thrilling adventure is written by acclaimed Super Sun scribe himself, Peter J. Tomasi. Check that one out and all these other issues. And if you're going to do this, please do it this week at your local comic book store for Source Wall Wednesday. Love comic book day. Love it. In Source Wall News, DC will kill the Justice League in April 2022. Y'all, okay, before I even get this out of the way, comics this year starting in April all the way up until like July, stuff's about to get real crazy in the books. So get your pockets ready, that's all I gotta say. But 30 years after the DC made its headlines off by killing Superman, they're poised to do it again. And this time, they're taking out the entire Justice League for good measure. As revealed by Entertainment Weekly, the current Justice League series will end with April's Justice League number 75, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Rafa Sandoval. There won't be an immediate replacement on the way, however, because most of the team will likely be killed in the story, battling a team called the Dark Army. That finale is intended to serve as the foundation for an ongoing storyline, 
that see the DCU come to terms with the loss of so many beloved heroes. Wow. The new storyline is intentionally designed to echo the infamous Death of Superman crossover from 1992, which culminated with the Man of Steel losing his life in a battle with Doomsday in Superman 75. Though Superman did eventually return to life, it was only after a prolonged absence and the rise of four temporary replacements in the following crossover reign of Superman. Now with that said, of the current Justice League roster, we have Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Jon Stewart, Martian Manhunter, Hawkgirl, Aquaman, Green Arrow, Black Canary, and Zatanna. And of these people, only one of the members will survive the battle with the Dark Army and bring news of the tragedy to Earth. Presumably, this will force a younger generation of heroes like John Kent Superman, Yara Floor, Wonder Girl, Jace Fox Batman, and Naomi McDuffie Powerhouse to step up and fill the void left by their mentors. This would also seem to suggest a number of other ongoing DC books would either be canceled or revamped to feature new lead characters. So what do you guys think? I mean, they're going to kill off the Justice League. I mean, I'll be reading it. I don't know about nobody else. I, mean, I know y'all. I know a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all hate DC for whatever reason. I think you just programmed. But this one's going to be dope. I, yeah, I'm here for this one. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll be reading this one. I'm also going to be reading this one. Marvel's Amazing Spider-Man Relaunch asks, what did Peter do? 2022 marks the 60th anniversary of Spider-Man's debut in the pages of Amazing Fantasy 15. And Marvel Comics has big plans for the wall crawler. Marvel will relaunch the flagship Amazing Spider-Man series in April of 2022, kicking off what looks like to be one of the darkest chapters in Peter's life. The new volume of Amazing Spider-Man will be held by the two veteran creators, writer Zeb Wells and artist John Romita Jr. Romita is among the most prolific Spider-Man artists of all time, with multiple lengthy runs of various Spider-Man titles dating back decades. Wells is overseeing the Spider-Man Beyond storyline currently for the ASM, which features the return of Peter's clone, Ben Riley. It seems Peter will reclaim the Spider-Man mantle by the end of that Beyond run, but not without some disastrous consequences. The promo art suggests Peter will cause a massive explosion in New York City, one possibly caused by his own tech. For a hero so often motivated by guilt, this disaster may be one that haunts Spider-Man for a long time to come. Yo, if y'all see that promo art, if y'all thought the art when he saw the 9-11 crash was kind of gut-wrenching, yo, you guys see this one too. It's 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 up there. Mm-mm-mm. It's going to get crazy next year. Spider-Man and the Justice League. Ugh. Let's go, man. It's going to get great. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa. Dude, I am the villain of the story. All right, y'all had to have seen this right here. The Moon Knight trailer was released and also given a release date. Oh, my God. Okay, so alongside a brand new trailer, Marvel has revealed that Moon Knight will premiere on Disney Plus on March 30th. The new trailer and release date were revealed during the Arizona Cardinals and Los Angeles Ram wildcard game and show the first look at the upcoming series. It's set to Kid Cudi's Day and Night. The Moon Knight trailer follows Mark Spector, played by Oscar Isaacs, who at times thinks he is another man named Steven. He is also seemingly can't tell the difference between life and dreams. We see him struggling with this and even chaining himself to bed and waking up not realizing he was the one who did it. <laughs> we also get our real first look at Ethan Hawke's Arthur Haro, a cult leader who is said to be inspired by David Koresh. It was previously unknown who Hawk was playing, but the closed captions of the YouTube trailer from Moon Knight on Marvel Entertainment's page revealed he will become Harrow, a character who only appeared in one comic, Moon Knight Volume 2, Number 2, and was a mad scientist who was working on stopping pain in the human body by using human subjects. As the trailer continues, we see Spectre embracing the chaos and becoming the titular Moon Knight, all while beating someone senseless in the bathroom. 
Alongside the trailer, Marvel also revealed a brand new poster that features a close-up of Moon Knight's arm and his weapon of choice, the moon-shaped shurikens known as crescent darts. Yo, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> I cannot wait for this show. Only thing I hate is that we lost Gaspar Uli. Uli, I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. Uh, we lost him through a ski accident this past week, so rest in peace to him. Shout out to his family. Hope they're doing good. But uh, yeah, that sucked. But the show's going to be amazing. And legendary cartoon King of the Hill is coming back. So at 25 years after Fox launched the original animated sitcom and introduced us to young Hank and the gang, King of the Hill is on his way back. You may want to meet us in the alley because the word on the street is that King of the Hill is being revived, y'all. That's according to Hollywood Report. That's the tagline there. Original creators Greg Daniels and Mike Judd have reunited to form their own animation company called Bandera Entertainment, which has a dozen more animated series in various stages of development. Daniels and Judd haven't shared any official details about the return of King of the Hill, other than to say that something is in the works. Other projects at Bandera include Netflix's newly ordered Bad Crimes, starring Nicole Byer and Lauren Lapkus, and Freeform's previously announced Praisley Pete, headlined by Schitt's Creek vet Annie Murphy. Yo, shout out to Daniels and Judd for getting their own company. That's a major key right there. We might even see the turn of use in Butthead. Who knows? But if Bobby Kill can come back and say that's my purse, and I tell you what, <laughs> and we get my man to know what the thought of the thing, but buddy, the Twitter Dale was it? <laughs> yo, King of the Hill coming back is going to be fire, yo. I can't wait. It's going to be hilarious. Let's get it. Let's hop into Thumb Life. Peace. Yeah. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers. Now, this was crazy. Xbox to buy Activision Blizzard. Xbox has announced a deal to buy Activision Blizzard, the company behind Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and many other major gaming franchises. Coming at a stupefying $6.7 billion. Crazy. Y'all could have bought the CW with that money. Announced at Xbox Wire, the new deal with Xbox will soon own the likes of Call of Duty, Warcraft, Overwatch, Diablo, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Candy Crush, and much more. CEO Microsoft Gaming Phil Spencer announced that all of Activision Blizzard companies will report to him after the deal is closed. No time scale has been given, however, we are looking at this deal coming to a close around 2023 on June the 30th. Oh my god, that's a major move right there. Could you imagine that from now on certain games like Overwatch and Call of Duty are only gonna be Xbox exclusives. Holy crap, Xbox, yo. I'm not an Xbox guy at all, but yo, that's a major move for them. Shout out to Microsoft and Xbox. That is major. A lot of people don't like that, but yo, I think that's a big, big move right there. The only thing that's really separating these systems nowadays is the exclusives, and if you have certain exclusives on your belt and buy those companies, Hell, why not? Shout out to Xbox. Rey Mysterio is the WWE 2K22 cover superstar, and we have a March release date. The return of the 2K series will be headlined by a superstar who's no stranger to dramatic returns himself, as 2K22 will feature a cover of Hall of Famer and Lucha Libre legend Rey Mysterio as his cover superstar. The news comes from a virtual press conference featuring Mysterio and hosted by WWE color commentary Byron Saxton, Shop Saxton, <laughs> and broadcast journalist Sam Roberts, who also announced the game's release date, which will be March 11th, 2022. The 2K22 will mark the first 2K game since 2019's disastrous 2K20 and promise to feature a redesigned gameplay engine, a new control scheme, and upgraded visuals in, a, visuals in addition to the new My GM mode, which allows players to step into the role of a GM and draft their own WWE roster. 
They also have the My Faction mode, which lets players collect and manage their own dream faction, and My Rise, which will serve as WWE's version of My Career mode, which allows players to create their own superstar and chart their own path to stardom. It's looking pretty good for WWE 2K22. Um, it's available for pre-order now, where you pre-order your games. Um, I'm definitely going to be getting my hands on this one. I know me and Don are going to be getting cracking on this one. Yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. Everything has been redone, redesigned, and we got a GM mode. Looks like they may have listened to me and Donald when we did that video. Hey, yeah, yes, yeah, son. I think they listened to us. I think they did. <laughs> I mean, we can't take the credit come like, like, you know, solely, but I mean, I'm pretty sure we had something to do with it. You know, we had, they, 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 they watching. They, they, they know, they know, they know. Okay, let's speak technical for a moment. Technically speaking, your technological advancements 1.21 gigawatts have you tried turning it off and on again now technically speaking instagram and tiktok both are testing subscriptions for influencer feeds ig and tiktok are reportedly both both testing subscription based services for their influencer feeds while IG announced the other day in a blog post that it was beginning to test the idea of subscriptions with a small number of creators, a report from the information suggests that TikTok may be doing the same. According to that report, a sports person told the outlet that TikTok is testing the idea of allowing its creators to charge subscriptions for their content, though declined to elaborate further on what, who's, on what those tests entail. Currently, the app allows fans to give money to creators both by sending them a tip or by purchasing virtual gifts that can be sent to creators and cashed in. The news of TikTok's interest in subscription-based service for creators on the app follows a similar announcement from IG made the other day. As part of the blog post, the Meta-owned social media app explained that it would be testing a number of subscription-based services with a handful of creators with options such as subscriber lives. Creators can broadcast exclusive lives to their subscribers, allowing them to engage more, engage more deeply. Subscriber stories. Creators can create stories just for their subscribers, allowing them to share exclusive content and to use interactive story stickers with their most engaged followers only. And subscriber badges. Creators will see a subscriber badge next to their comments and messages so they can easily identify their subscribers. Now, to me... As someone who does get it in on TikTok and Instagram, this is cool, but you got to know it's got to come with certain restrictions. And one of those restrictions is that you probably need to have a certain number of followers. That's where I have the problem. And it's not that I have a low number of followers. I mean, on on TikTok, I got like 200 something IG I have with that, oh, over a thousand. But of course, you know, they have people who have these 10,000 and 100,000 followers and a million followers here and this, that, and the third. It's just like, I don't understand if I'm a creator, why do I have to have that following? Can I have the tools? That's just one of those things that I kind of want to work on when I get my foot in the door. Thing. And once I have the millions of followers, I want to be able to influence and say, hey, listen, there's a creator who's right now doing his thing, killing everybody who has a million followers and the content is better. They need to have these tools unlock them for him well he doesn't have a million followers it doesn't matter he needs these tools it just sucks that you have to have these certain numbers first before you can have these certain tools that would help grow your brand in the first place but i digress and i will get off my soapbox and say i am nix that is the pod i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here thank you all for listening Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out our YouTube channel, like and subscribe there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?